HemaQ, a world leader in the manufacture and sale of point-of-care blood test systems, introduces the HemaQ Glucose 201 system. The intended use of the HemaQ Glucose 201 system is for the quantitative determination of glucose in whole blood, supplementing the clinical evidence in the diagnosis and treatment of patients with diabetes, as well as monitoring of neonatal blood glucose levels. The Glucose 201 analyzer uses HemaQ's patented and unique single test disposable microcuvette and combines it with the convenience and portability of a handheld pocket-sized analyzer. This instrument provides immediate lab quality results for healthcare professionals in virtually any healthcare setting. The Glucose 201 test system consists of an analyzer and disposable microcuvettes with reagent in dried form. The microcuvette is used for collecting the sample and as a reaction vessel and measuring cuvette. When the reaction is complete, the glucose result is displayed as a plasma equivalent. Results are linear from 0 to 444 milligrams per deciliter. The cuvette holder, used to move the cuvette in and out of the analyzer, has three positions. Number one, completely withdrawn for cleaning. Number two, pulled out loading position. And number three, completely pushed in for measuring position. First, connect the power adapter to the power inlet and to the main power supply. Next, pull the cuvette holder out into the loading position. Press and hold the on-off button on the front of the analyzer until the display is activated. The words self-test and the version of the program should now be seen on the display. The words GLU will then be displayed. The analyzer may also be powered using batteries. Place four AA batteries in the battery compartment. A new set of batteries can operate continuously for 100 to 150 hours. Remember, when going from battery power to main power supply, turn the analyzer off before connecting. The system is factory calibrated and needs no further calibration. The HemaQ glucose reference system is traceable to an isotope dilution gas chromatography mass spectrometry method, or IDGCMS. The HemaQ Glucose 201 microcuvettes contain an exact quantity of dried reagents, which automatically produce a chemical reaction when in contact with blood. The microcuvettes should be stored refrigerated. A sealed, unopened vial of microcuvettes has an expiration date of nine months from the date of manufacture, as is indicated on each vial. Once opened, the vial will have an expiration date of 30 days. It is recommended that the date of opening be written on the vial for good laboratory practice. Microcuvettes should never be left outside the plastic vial even for short periods. Only remove the required number of microcuvettes. Microcuvettes are moisture sensitive. Each vial has a desiccant in the lid to prevent moisture accumulation. Always close the lid with a tight snap. Some microcuvettes are packaged individually wrapped. They must still be restored refrigerated, however the individual packaging provides the full expiration date since only one package is opened at a time. To perform a capillary sampling test, first make sure all of your capillary supplies are ready for testing. To begin, pull out the cuvette holder to the loading position. This is noted by a distinct stop which should not be exceeded. Turn on the analyzer by pressing and briefly holding the on and off switch on the front of the unit. The display shows self-test and the version number followed by the letters G, L, U. After approximately 15 seconds, the display shows ready with three flashing dashes. Next, take a microcuvette out of the vial and close the vial immediately. Make sure that the patient is seated comfortably. The hand should be warm and relaxed. The patient's hand should be straight but not tense to avoid stasis. 
For best results, use the middle finger or ring finger for sampling, and avoid fingers with rings. Clean the intended puncture site with a disinfectant and allow it to completely dry or wipe off with a dry, lint-free wipe. Using your thumb, lightly press the finger from the top knuckle to the tip. This stimulates the flow of blood to the sampling point. Use very gentle pressure. Place the lancet at the side of the fingertip. Not only is the blood flow at its best at this point, it also causes the least amount of pain. Since the majority of imprecise results are due to poor capillary blood flow, it is essential that a deep puncture is obtained. Wipe away the first two to three drops of blood. This stimulates blood flow. If necessary, apply light pressure again until another drop of blood appears. Avoid milking. Make sure that the drop of blood is big enough to fill the microcuvette completely. Introduce the microcuvette tip into the middle of the blood drop. Fill the cuvette in one continuous process. If the cuvette is not completely filled, discard the cuvette and repeat the procedure. Use a lint-free material to wipe off the excess blood from the outside of the cuvette tip. Use the motion of removing butter off a knife. Caution must be taken not to touch the open end of the microcuvette in order to prevent drawing of blood back out of the capillary chamber. The filled microcuvette should be visually inspected for air bubbles. Small air bubbles around the edge do not influence the result. Place the filled microcuvette into the cuvette holder immediately. Note that the shape of the holder matches that of the microcuvette and will not allow backwards or upside down insertion. Gently slide the cuvette holder into the measuring position within 40 seconds of filling the cuvette with the blood sample. If a second sample is to be taken from the same finger stick, it is important that this should be done after the first sample has been read. Wipe away the remains of the first sample and take a second one from a new drop of blood. After 40 to 240 seconds, the result will be displayed. The result will be displayed as a plasma equivalent value and it will remain on the display as long as the cuvette holder is in the measuring position. Once the glucose value is obtained and recorded, pull the cuvette holder out and to the loading position and remove the microcuvette. The microcuvette cannot be remeasured. Discard the microcuvette and land set into a proper biohazard container. In case of severe hypotension or peripheral circulatory failure, glucose measurement from a capillary sample may be misleading. In such circumstances, it is recommended that venous or arterial whole blood be used. Capillary, venous, or arterial whole blood may be used. Appropriate anticoagulants in solid form, such as EDTA, heparin or heparin fluoride, and glycolysis inhibitors, such as sodium oxalate, sodium fluoride, and potassium oxalate, may be used. Glycolysis is a major concern in all glucose measurements. To minimize the effect of glycolysis, measure the blood sample as soon as possible after taking the sample. Place a drop of blood onto a non-absorbent surface, for example a plastic film, using a pipette or diff safe. Introduce the microcuvette tip into the middle of the drop in a way so that the whole microcuvette is filled in one step. Place the microcuvette into the analyzer as previously shown. To comply with good laboratory practice, a quality control check of the HemiQ Glucose Tool 1 system must be performed on each day of testing prior to patient testing using recommended controls. Contact HemiQ Inc. for further information on suitable control materials. Follow the control manufacturer's instructions for storage, mixing, and care. When testing, place a drop of control material onto a non-absorbent surface, for example a plastic film. Introduce the microcuvette tip into the middle of the drop and allow the microcuvette to be filled in one step. Wipe the sides of the microcuvettes as described earlier. Place the filled microcuvette into the cuvette holder and push it into the measuring position within 40 seconds. Wipe the threads of the vial and cap with a clean tissue before replacing. Recap the vial tightly and store the control according to the manufacturer's instruction. When the result is displayed, compare the result with the expected value. 
If the result does not fall within the expected range, consult the troubleshooting section of the operating manual and do not proceed with further testing. The cuvette holder should be cleaned daily with alcohol or mild soap solution after removing it from the analyzer. It is important that the holder is completely dry before replacing it in the analyzer. Improper use may result in blood being splattered into the optics, obstructing its light path, and causing the analyzer to display an error code. This can easily be corrected by cleaning the optronic unit using the HemiQ cleaner. To remove the cuvette holder, make sure the analyzer is turned off. The display should be blank. Pull the cuvette holder out to the loading position, using a pointed object to carefully press a small catch positioned in the upper right corner of the cuvette holder. While pressing the catch, carefully rotate the cuvette holder towards the left as far as possible. Carefully pull the cuvette holder away from the analyzer. Clean the cuvette holder with an alcohol or mild detergent. After removing the cuvette holder, take out a cleaner from its package and open the individually wrapped cleaner. Insert the cleaner into the optronic unit and clean by pushing the cleaner in and out about 5 to 10 times. Inspect the cleaner. If the cleaner is contaminated with blood, repeat the process with a new cleaner. Wait 15 minutes before replacing the cuvette holder and using the analyzer. If a HemiQ cleaner is not available, the optronic unit can also be cleaned using a cotton tip swab slightly moistened with distilled water.